please welcome up Peter Nix. Bam. What's up, everybody? I wrote some shit down here. Love you, too. <laughs> All right. Okay. Damn, Chi Wei was quick. Uh, I was doing some editing. No, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna talk. I'm gonna do a little storytelling. A lot to say. Um, first, I have to thank a bunch of people. Um, John and Bonnie. Uh, first of all, thank you for you know being there with me and and um, on this journey. And um, you've seen it all since the since the genesis of this uh, genesis of this thing. Um, and there's so many other friends. A lot of them are in this room. I'm meeting a lot of new new friends, um, and we've all been through a you know very rough um, you know couple couple years. Everybody's getting emotional. You know, Tom was up here crying. <laughs> uh, I was at the cinema. It was Cinema Eye, and AJ was up there crying. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's a reason for that. And there's this collective loss that we're all going through and we're all, we're all having our personal losses and journeys journeys as well um, but I just wanted to thank a whole bunch of people right now real quick Tom and the whole Doc NYC community has been a huge supporter of my work over these years and I step back and, and, and realize and, and, and get perspective on it for a minute and I, I just can't I can't believe it um, and I wouldn't be here without, without that support. So thank you so much, Tom, Doc NYC. Um, the Drew family, Jill Drew, um, you know, man, the legends of, of Cinema Verite that inspired me. Uh, Robert and Ann and, you know, Penn and Baker and, and, and Wiseman, and I'm working on a project with RJ now. Really, really, truly remarkable. But we, we need to get some more, you know, some more swarthy folks up in, up in there. No shade. All legends. And so I'm trying to do my best to contribute to that. But thank you uh, well, for, for, for building that foundation for us. Um, and I'm definitely honored to be here um, alongside Joan and, and Raul and in Chihue, uh, it's really, really an honor um, to be in your company. And um, Kate Hurwitz, my, my manager. Um, Kate. We all have a manager, not all of us. But I, I decided to, you know, sort of join forces with Kate. Uh, she, she sort of believed in me, you know, from the very beginning um, after she saw the, the waiting room and she's um, just been a rock there for me um, and really she kind of represents the industry in, so, in some ways so many different people have been there to support me but Kate, Kate thank you so much um, my family's not here right now they're they're back in in the in, in the bay I was gonna bring my son but I was like dude you're just gonna be bored man <laughs> he was like can I bring my scooter and I was like yeah you can bring it but I mean, I'm going to be in like meetings and on like like doing Q and A's and all that good stuff. But you know, God bless Paolo. Paolo, he's um he's been through a lot. My wife Vanna, uh, and, and uh, my my daughter Karina. Um, she's uh, you know many of you knew her. Some of you met her. Some of you didn't. Um, but if you can see Homeroom. It's not a film about her, but it is about her in, in a lot of ways. It was, uh, 
It was her graduating class. She went to Oakland Tech. The kids went to Oakland High. Um, and, and, you know, she, she, it just wasn't her time and space to be on this earth with, with us in, in this way. And um, she somehow allowed that film to happen. And she's allowing me to continue and, and she's teaching me in new ways and gui being that guiding light for me. Um, the film is dedicated to her, it's about her, it's for her. And, and for all of her friends uh, that were part of that um, class of 2020 that just got sideswiped. And you know, all these are kids who are dreaming since they were five years old of their prom and their graduation and you know, the senior parties and all that was taken away from them. And um, how they found their voice in the process is, uh, I, I have never experienced anything quite like that in, in terms of documenting their story. Um, by the way, like it said Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, like I, I'm, I'm still, I'm like in the beginning. <laughs> but I, oh no, they, they fixed it, okay, that's true. But um, I just want to just talk a little bit about um, why I do what I do. And um, John and Bonnie mentioned my film, The Wolf, which I don't, I don't think anybody's seen this movie. Has anybody seen it? Raise your hand if you've seen The Wolf. A few people. We gotta, Tom, we gotta get like a Vimeo link out, out to people. <laughs> it was my first film, and um, John Ellis had started, uh, a, a, it was two, it was, it was, I just graduated film school at Cal, go Bears, and um, although I disavowed myself from Aaron Rodgers, me and Aaron have to have a discussion, a little, t little chat. John, John had started this uh, documentary center in 2000 to support filmmakers because he, he was so frustrated. I think he submitted something like 130 funding applications for his movie Sing Faster, um, Stagehands Ring Cycle, which is an amazing film if you haven't seen it. Um, and he, he was frustrated by that and he wanted to support filmmakers and so he, he started it with the support of Ford and MacArthur Foundations, a center, to uh, fund filmmakers and not proposals. And so I was one of the first Round is myself, um, Al Mazels, um, rest in peace, Al, and um, Lourdes Portillo. And we were each given uh, a chunk of money to make whatever film we wanted to make. And my film that I decided to make was exploring um, my addiction and incarceration through the perspective of my family, my friends, the federal judge who sentenced me, the, my lawyer, um, the prosecuting attorney in my case, uh, the U assistant U.S. attorney in my case was Al, uh, was um, Merrick Garland, who's now the Attorney General. <laughs> Just a little fun fact there. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I made that film because I felt that if I was going to spend a, a lifetime documenting other people's lives and, and asking them for their trusts and, and invading their space, um, I should start with my own story. And so um, I, I did that, and my story is one of great trauma in some ways, but also great beauty. And I think that sort of dialectic has been a guiding principle for how I like to explore my stories. And, um, you know, um, I'll, I'll see if I can get that link out to everybody. <laughs> Maybe Hulu will. Hulu, <laughs> by, by the way, who acquired, and, and, and a shout out to Netflix. We're gonna give love to everybody. Jason Spingarnkoff, Netflix, acquired The Force. Um, Hulu did acquire Homeroom, and, and thankfully the rights to the other two films freed up, and so now Hulu uh, has the whole trilogy, which is a wonderful, it's wonderful to see those films all together in the same place, telling, telling that grand narrative of one American city. Um, and, and hopefully Hulu will uh, pick up The Wolf, which was edited by uh, my dear friend Kim Roberts and Jeffrey Friedman. It's really an amazing thing. Um, but that, that, that process of turning the lens on myself really you know, guided me. And then when I, when I began making The Waiting Room, one of the first um, things I experienced in that waiting room was a, a, a family that had lost their daughter. And um, I'll never forget the wails from that, um, that emergency room bay. And, and, um, 
it struck me that we, we carry an enormous, it's an enormous responsibility what we do and how we do it, the ethics of how we do it, the, the power, uh, you know, the power of documentary filmmaking. Um, and the process of being in that space, in that waiting room, not just making the film, but having conversations with hundreds of people um, really set me on my path. Um, it did become a trilogy at some point, I don't know when it, it, it did, but I knew in experiencing the, the grief and pain of that family that I couldn't tell their whole story in this one film. And I endeavored to try to reach out um, into the community to reflect their story and the story of that community. Um, we're all telling some version of our own, our own story. The version of the, the grief and the, the loss that I've experienced uh, is embedded in, in my films. I, I think that um, we're all experiencing some degree of that, and I hope that we can never forget and remember the beauty that always sits alongside that grief, and, and you cannot have one without the other. And the inspiration of my friends, this community, keeps me going. I'm grateful for it, and so thank you very much, and I'll see you after the party. Yeah.